what's happening with Allergan, the longtime Kramer fave drug company with a huge medical aesthetics business that you know I love. We own Allergan for my charitable trust. You can follow along at actionalertsplus.com, largely because it is some of the best growth in the industry. Six phase three product candidates all together could be worth $13 billion in peak sales. Yet its stock sells for just over 13 times next year's earnings. Company also got a long history of delivering excellent results. Just last Thursday, it delivered a 10 cent earnings beat, and it was a real beat off of a 392 basis, higher than expected revenues, up 8.8% this year. Management even raised their full year guidance. I didn't get that from any other drug company. However, the stock has barely budged on the news. Now it's actually down from where it was trading before the company reported. Makes me wonder isn't Allergan getting? Let's just say it's not getting the credit it deserves. Let's take a closer look at Brent Saunders, the chairman and CEO of Allergan, get a better sense of the quarter and where his company's headed. Mr. Saunders, welcome back to Bit Money. Good to see you. Thanks for having but, me. But I am a little incensed yeah. by the way your stock is. I was looking at Merck and Pfizer and Bristol. I mean, look, these are good companies, all right? But they have higher multiples than you. Now, a 3% yield should not protect anyone, okay? Um, I'm trying to understand what it is. And I've, this is what I'm giving my theory. You own Teva. You have a stake in Teva. Every day Teva goes down, hurts your stock. Kids just dump it. <laughs> well, look, we, we, we do own a small dollar value of Teva. Right. right? It's about 10% of Teva. But it's just a couple billion dollars. Yeah. Um, we also have several billion dollars in cash. Um, and, uh, you know, we do, when we did the, did the deal with Teva o over a year ago, we were locked up for one year. The one year just expired a few days ago. We've been very clear from the day we took the Teva position as part of the consideration for the $40.5 billion that we would not be long-term holders of Teva. However, we're responsible stewards. We will sell the stock over the next few quarters in a very responsible way. We're not going to be long-term into Teva. Right, but just, I'm not sure selling at this price is no, the right I price No, I know. I just feel like, look, yeah. I have been, I have spent hours since you reported trying to figure out the valuation. Most companies do not have as much in the pipe. Most of the drugs that people have in the pipe aren't as big as yours. So it was the only thing I could come up with. Yeah. Well, I think trading on, on the, the stock market valuation of Teva for Allergan doesn't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> right. To be fair. I want to talk yeah. about uh, the drugs, the six stars. And I know that you're going to give them short shrift if you just peel down. But just market size opportunity and where you are. Yeah, so probably the two biggest are um, Rapastinel, which is in phase three. Um, and this is our novel depression uh, drug. It right. uh, uh, could be a game changer in depression. IV. IV. Well, short bolus injection. Right. So it's about a 30-second injection. Okay. So it's not, uh, it's not like sitting at, with a bag for hours. Okay. We know that that can be delivered in the psychiatrist's office, the primary care doctor's okay. office. And there's a whole infrastructure around the world for home infusion okay. as well as infusion centers. So right. we don't think people thought we couldn't do injections for migraines, and we do that just Good fine. Good point. Good point. Um, so that shouldn't be an issue. The, the relief we saw, if the data is replicated from phase two to phase three, which we're about halfway through, will be a game changer in a huge market like depression. Yeah, huge, huge. The other is our oral CGRP compounds. We have two of them, a bro Japan and a English, Japan. English, come on. <laughs> right. Migraine. So, so one for prophylaxis and one for, and one for chronic. Okay. Um, both are in late stage testing. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple thousand patients enrolled in these programs. They're proceeding ahead of schedule. Great. The safety looks good so far, really good so far. Right. Um, and so we'll get results next year. And, and both could be game changer. The migraine market is massive. Okay. There's this whole new class of drugs coming, which are injectables or infused. Right. These will be the only orals, and we know that people prefer pills. Oh, oh my God, yes. To to injections, and now we can go back to Rapastinil. You said injection, okay. right? We're also developing a pill. We have a yes. small molecule falling behind us. Okay, well. now medical. I don't think people understand medical aesthetics. You're, you said something that made me think. This your company may be the selfie generation. <laughs> no, I'm, I mean yeah. it. Selfie generation drug company because you said both males but millennials are doing this. Now yeah. that was not the case. Uh, for people who are when I was a millennial age, right. how is that? How's that happening? Yeah, so let's just take one market, the United okay. States. We all know it. We live in it, right? right. 30 million people consider um, aesthetic applications today, roughly 30 okay. million people. Only 3 million receive. So we haven't even penetrated the market, and we could double that 30 million to 60 million with with a little. And bit these of work. are people. We don't have to worry about Medicare. We, we don't, don't have to worry it's about all cash. It's all cash. All cash. Now within that 3 million that are considering. We see two new groups that are starting to emerge. Millennials, 
which only account for maybe 10, 15 percent right. of the three million, and males, which also probably account for 10, 15 percent. So both relatively new to that three million mm -hmm. group, but growing quickly. And so, yes, maybe the selfie generation has a lot to do with this. Okay. Now, there's yeah. also, uh, you were a little disappointed with uh, Kybella. You weren't happy with the sales, but you seem to think that you can get that going. We're not disappointed with Kybella. Kybella, as a drug, is delivering exactly <laughs> what it intended to do, which is uh, submental fullness, right? right? Reduction of the double chin. It works. We know it works. There are enough adopters. There's enough use out there that we know it works. Okay. We are creating a new market, the lower face, right? You've right. said, and you, I use it all the time, that Allergan owns the face. Yes. Right? You do. So now we're training people on the lower face. It takes some time. It took us a long time to develop the upper face, several years. Cool scoping for, for fat right. reduction, it's been around six, seven years. We just hit somewhere around four or five million treatments. We're just hitting our stride. These new markets take a few years to develop. We should be patient, but Kybella works. It delivers exactly as the label indicates, right. and the injectors are getting comfortable with it. All right, last thing, uh, FDA, uh, the whole scheme of, of affordable health care, Obamacare, where do you fit in and what do you see happening? Yeah, look, I applaud all the efforts to make medicines more affordable and accessible. In fact, you know Allergan has been a leader in this I, arena. Well, it, it, yeah. With very few followers, man. Very, unfortunately, <laughs> not enough followers. But we did a social contract almost a year ago, an idea stimulated right here on Mad Money when you asked me about uh, Secretary Clinton's tweet um, that really got me thinking about it. And, and so... What we're seeing in this administration is constructive. I think the things that Secretary Price are doing, uh, Commissioner Gottlieb, to really look at how do we stimulate competition, how do we break down the barriers that are artificial that cause high drug prices. Mm -hmm. But let's remember, we have to also make sure there's an incentive to invest right. for innovation. We have to solve your laryngitis. We have yes, lots of un please, we have a lot four of times a year. Need. Clockwork. Yes. Brent, thank you so thank much. You. That's Brent Sauters, Chairman CEO of Allergan. I don't understand the valuation other than tell you it's too cheap. May have money's back after the break. Yeah. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from May have Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.